What's up, Duelist? Yesterday, KJH, a lot of you guys may know him from Super Smash Bros. Melee, one of the goats in that game. He also plays Edison Format, and he's a really strong player in Edison Format as well. He hit me up yesterday, and he was like, yo, check out this deck list. And at first, I was like, I don't know about Bubble Man. And he's like, no, 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 let me cook, let me cook. So we tested a few matches, and this deck is it's pretty heat, let me tell you, because it looks like a Hero Beat deck list. Like, on paper, you look at this, and you're like, yeah, this just looks like a hero beat deck list, but it's randomly an OTK deck because you just have turns where you like Diva, Special Bubble Man, Normal Stratos, whatever, and then um, you can Miracle Fusion and it's like very easily 8,000 damage. So this deck's actually terrifying to play against. I'm going to show you guys a few replays of us testing it and then if I have time, I'm also going to be playing this deck in a match. Now the list, again, this is not something we've seen a lot of in the past. But it definitely has legs, and I, I think it's legit. I think it's actually legit. Okay, I'm going to show you guys also the two decks that I play when we were testing. The first deck that I played versus him is just like a like a frog deck. It's like a quick draw frog deck with like some hero stuff. I just threw it together because it looked like a bunch of fun cards that like could see tournament play. I don't know. This looks like something that someone would bring to a tournament. I don't know. And so I was like, okay, this looks like a legit deck. Let's just run it up against him and, and see how it goes. So... This game, uh, this is our first testing game with the decks. We are playing a little bit more loose because we're trying to trying to test the decks. So like we are taking back some plays. We're trying to like figure out exactly like what is optimal for the deck in these testing sessions. So this is a little bit more of just like we're trying to figure out what makes this deck good. good. Like how, how can it poten potentially work? We're not trying to get like a super competitive match out of this. We're just trying to figure out exactly if the deck is legit or not. He loses the rock, paper, scissors. Or no, he wins the Rock, Paper, Scissors. He opens up with Gold Sark. So as you can see, this hand's already really good. He can summon Alias, and then next turn, he can actually just go for an OTK, which is crazy. Because next turn, he summons Diva, specials Bubble Man. That's Bryo, Goyo, plus the Miracle Fusion is absolute zero, and he wins the game. That's 8,000 damage. So yeah, he Gold Sarks for Future Fusion. Normal sets, passes the turn. I Normal Summon Swap Frog. I send Dupe, Treeborn Frog. And the reason I make this opening, instead of like, you know, getting real crazy with it, like special quick draw enemy controllers guy banished with Valiant stuff, is because this is what I would do versus Hero Beat. I would just get my Treeborn Frog in the graveyard. Next turn, I can do some cool shit. I mean, that's pretty much what I would do, you know? I bounce my Swap Frog, I pass the turn. Here, he sets Miracle, sets E Call, Normal's Diva, Special's Diva, Special's Bubble Man, E Calls for another Bubble Man. Now, here, he could he could E Call for just about anything because Bryo plus Goyo plus Absolute Zero, I believe, is it's 8100. So he doesn't need to, he doesn't even really need to e-call here, I don't think. But he can. That's the, that's the thing, is he, he can do it. This is, this is hella lethal. So yeah. Yeah, and then we just go to the next game. So that looked kind of like a nut draw, but honestly, it, it really wasn't that much. It was just Diva, Alias, Bubble Man. These are all cards you play a ton of copies of. The only card that's like kind of hard to get access to is Miracle Fusion, but Gold Sark can search for it. So yeah, pretty legit stuff. Keep in mind also, uh, we may see some cards that aren't in this exact list that I'm showing you that he was playing in these replays, but we alter the, or I alter the list a little bit afterward because that's probably what I'm going to end up playing at the end of this video. We go to the next match, and yeah, I mean, this deck can just like randomly kill you out of nowhere. It's, it's pretty interesting. It, it's not something that like I, I had ever thought of, like using Bubble Man as like a quote-unquote extender for like big OTK plays, but in theory, it just like kind of makes perfect sense. Again, his hand's pretty solid here. I mean, he has Spark plus Alias, so, like, that's usually enough to get pretty good mileage. I normal summon Stratos. I grab Evil Guy, Infernal Prodigy. I set Dust. I pass a turn. He goes Alias attack over the Stratos. 100. Set the Spark. M phase, we Dust. Pass a turn. Special Evil Guy. Go for Caius. Now, this is pretty rough for him because this shuts off most of his hand. So, he attack for 2,400. He finds Stratos, and now his hand's back online. <laughs> that's just how these hero decks go, is, like... All you need is one card to, like, turn everything on. And then your synergies are very strong. So, yeah, sets the Hero Blast, uh, which, you know, you want to get that card set as early as possible. You may end up using it on the next turn or something like that. I reveal all my frogs because I'm like, dude, I just keep drawing these stupid little frogs. They do nothing. We attack over the Stratos. We pass a turn. We set Defrog. He goes ahead and summons Alias. He sets a bunch. Specials Bubble Man. Goes for Spark. Now, here, in hindsight, we reviewed this match. And this is actually a misplay. He doesn't need to spark here at all. He can just special the Bubble Man and then Miracle Fusion. Um, banish the Bubble Man and the Stratos. And then uh, attack over the Caius, basically. And hold up the Gemini Spark. And that actually causes causes the result of this match to be a little bit different. If he had saved his Spark, he would have been in a much better spot here, I think. 
In any case, he flips Miracle Fusion, goes for Absolute Zero, attacks over the Dew Frog. We get a search Swap Frog, but our hand's not really improving. We do find another Caius, which is nice. We brain control the Absolute Zero. We're able to attack for 25, sack for Caius. This is going to target one of his back rows. He's going to chain it. This is going to blow up the Caius because of Absolute Zero effect. Here, I'm going to Foolish Dandy. And then I'm going to, I think I pitch Special Swap. No, I don't. He goes Future Fusion off the top, which is very nice. Sends Alias plus Diva. Normal summons Alias. Attacks over a token. Passes our turn. We are able to pitch Special Swap. Here, he Super Polys, but what he should have done was just wait to Super Poly because, um, like, if we sack for a Monarch, we're going to sack the, the token, if that makes sense. And then he can chain Super Poly then to the Monarch effect. And then if we don't sack for a Monarch, let's say we go Enemy Controller, take his guy or whatever, because I was going to bounce Swap Frog, renormal it, Enemy Controller, take his guy, and then try to go for game, then he can, uh, he can Super Poly then. So what he should have done here is just wait for the Super Poly, and then he actually would have been totally fine. So a couple of different things that could have changed about this match that we had talked about in the post-sport situation, or not post-sport situation, but post-game situation, uh, that he could have changed differently to make the outcome of this match different. So it's it's good to keep in mind when you're testing stuff like, oh, I could have played this slightly different. I could have played this a different way. It would have ended with a different outcome. It would have made it so my deck actually did perform better. And it's not necessarily my deck's fault whether or not I lost this game, but it is, it's a, it's a player thing. So yeah, for sure. So here we are able to just enemy controller take the zero and attack for game. So that was game two. Game three, we've got, you know, like again, a decent hand. It's not bad, but we are going second. He opens up with future fusion, which is pretty solid. He's able to send Diva plus Alias to the grave. He summons Alias, sets Spark, passes a turn. So this is a pretty solid opening from him. I mean, he's got Hero Blast. He's got Mind Control. He's got E Call. He's got Absolute Zero coming. There's a lot of good stuff happening here. We go ahead one for one pitch Dandy, get some tokens. Activate Substitute. Now here he could have changed the, chained the Spark to pop the Substitute, which I probably would have done if I was him, honestly. But at this point, we already have, um, yeah, we already have Treeborn access, so it's like it's kind of like whatever. You might as well just wait until until you go for your big OTK push, which you can piece together pretty easily with Spark plus your Blast plus my Control. I feel like, but I could be wrong. I could be capping. Anyway, we special out Swap Frog, special out Treeborn, special out Treeborn, special out Uni. Attack directly. And then here, because he didn't know we were playing Unifrog, he's a, he's forced to spark here. So yeah, you could have he could have just sparked the Substitute, and it would have stopped the Unifrog shit, and also would have stopped us from getting a Dupe Frog, which probably is the better play. But we would have had Treeborn access either way, so it like kind of changes the dynamic of the game a little bit. Either way, he picks up Torrential Tribute, which is like God Card versus Frog Monarchs. We bounce Swap, we Normal Dupe with our extra Normal from Swap, and we pass a turn. I don't want to activate Future Fusion quite yet because I don't want to shut off my own treeborn and i also don't want to make guy i kind of want to make zero but in hindsight i probably should have activated it because i don't think i have any waters left in my deck so i probably should have activated it sent the second dandelion and then uh had the tokens for caius next turn uh, he sets sets monster sets back uh back row he draws sangin sangin didn't end up making the final cut in my version of the list uh i ended up cutting it for call of the haunted i think call of the haunted is a little bit better of an extender sangin can get stuck in your hand if you need to go for some bubble man stuff now, Sangin's not bad, and it's definitely worth considering in a deck like this. I could potentially see it fitting in over one of these cards just as a way to get access to D.Va, but I'm not really sure what you'd cut, because everything else seems, like, pretty necessary. Um, anyway, we draw Card Trooper, which is uh, something I sided in. We bring back Treeborn, and here he makes a little bit of a step error. He should Torrential once we go for our next play. If we go for, um, if we go for a Monarch, he can Torrential that. If we go for the Swap Frog he knows about, he can Torrential that. He can definitely get more out of this Torrential by just waiting on it. And this is like, this is how good Torrential is versus Frogs. If you, if they set up Dupe Lock and you set Torrential, they pretty much can't play until they find Heavy Storm. So here he was a little bit scared of Heavy Storm. He goes for the Torrential, but he could have just waited if he just like figured like, oh, I don't have Heavy Storm. Either way, it's going to be solid for him because he's going to get a Sangin Search. And then on top of that, he's getting Absolute Zero next turn unless I uh, do something about the Future Fusion, so... Yeah, we're able to add back Unifrog, add back Swap Frog. He grabs Deep Sea Diva. Um, we bring back uh, Treeborn. I sack for Caius, target the Future Fusion. Now, I could have gone Unifrog, um, like pitch special swap, bounce a swap, extra normal Uni, like do a lot of roundabout shit to pop the Future Fusion, save my Caius. I also could have pitched special swap main one. I could have done a bunch of stuff differently this turn, but um, I figured I'd just do the, the simple play because we're just testing and it's all marginally the same. Uh, I pitch special swap in defense. 
Again, I didn't really want the swap in attack position in case he was able to go for like absolute zero. Plus, I'm gonna extra normal the uni, main two, send dandelion, and I probably should have gone for it in attack position because I end up extra normaling the uni frog just to put up four bodies so that I can potentially Kaius next turn. He draws for turn, he has deep sea diva, special summon out the spine gilman, sets three, he calls for bubble man, and he's actually able to clear all of our stuff by going for mistworm. Now he could have done it a couple of different ways. He has mind control. He could have grabbed another diva. He could have made like arm uh, plus another dude, or he could have just like attacked over all the, all the, it, there's a bunch of different ways he could have done this, but this is just one of the ways he could have done it to out all three guys. And then this kind of locks me out of using my, um, my Caius next turn, which is unfortunate. Uh, he probably should have also bounced the Unifrog, but getting damage isn't necessarily bad. Um, Swap Frog, if we have another water, we can pitch to special it. I mean, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on in these matches, and there's a lot to review in this type of thing. But the whole point is to look at how Bubble Man was able to extend them to a point where they're able to do something about an established board like this. We draw Vanity's Fiend, and now we're just kind of boned. We have to set Card Trooper. Hero Blast, add back Alias, plus Miracle Fusion is going to be game with the Mind Control. So yeah, I mean, this deck is just like randomly an OTK deck, which is super cool. Now, the next match we play, it shows... Again, a little bit more of the strength of the deck. I brought a deck that I normally bring to tournaments because he was like, oh, what deck do you normally bring to tournaments? I'm like, well, this one, because this is the one that I own, which is like, uh, it's a dragon deck, basically. It's It's got um, Rhoda, it's got Triple Duty, Warrior Lady. This is a deck that I play IRL. It's the deck I've been playing IRL for like the last two years. I've had a lot of success with it in tournaments. So I was like, eh, all right, let's just test it out. Let's see how your, your, your new brew does against, you know, this deck that I've had like a bunch of tested tournament results with. So we get into the match. Um, here I win the rock, paper, scissors, which is pretty huge. I have a solid hand. I have mass dragon. I have call of the haunted. I have pretty much everything you'd ask for out of a hand from this deck. Mass dragon can get us to totem, which can get us to white knight. I like leading on that a little bit more than I do like leading on the DD warrior lady. Usually I want to use warrior lady in this deck as a way to respond to resolved like two for one threats. Like let's say my opponent goes, um, into a stardust dragon or something. Like let's say they have... Uh, Flamvel Fire Dog. I don't know. That's just like a something, for example. Sure, if I had set Warrior Lady, they attack into it. I could banish both. But, you know, let's say they attack into our Mass Dragon, and then uh, they make a Stardust. Then I can DD Warrior Lady banish it. That's not a good example. I'm trying to think of a better example. I don't know. I like using DD Warrior Lady on higher value threats rather than like on like whatever's attacking me turn one, basically. And if they don't attack me turn one, I can always summon it next turn, basically. So yeah, uh, they Mind Control. They flip Mass Dragon, which sucks for us. But thankfully, it's not DD Warrior Lady because if it was, it would get us, um, it would get us owned by uh, by putting a non dragon in our graveyard. Basically, he, uh, another reason I like setting the Mass Dragon there is because I have White Knight Dragon, and I just want to turn on my hand. Like DD Warrior Lady is always going to be live, whereas White Knight Dragon isn't always going to be live, and there's a higher chance they attack into a set turn one uh, than like later in the game. Basically, they make Stardust, and so pretty happy I saved the DD Warrior Lady. Tax for twenty five. Here's Call the Haunted on the Mass Dragon. They do end up attacking into it. We grab ourselves a Totem Dragon. They set a back row and pass the turn. Back row is Hero Blast, so not live right now. Um, so we could just like shotgun the White Knight. I think that's what I do. No, I go DD Warrior Lady. So yeah, I wanted to bait Bottomless first, because if they have Bottomless, I can just book my Warrior Lady. And if they attack over the Totem Dragon, I can just like bring it back next turn and still do the White Knight play next turn. But I wanted to bait Bottomless first by going for DD Warrior Lady. It looks like they didn't have it, so I was able to trade with the Stardust Dragon pretty effectively. Now, we do have Dust Shoot here, which is very nice, um, and the Dust Shoot is going to hit, which is also very nice. So, Dust Shoot hits the Sangin. Uh, they have Ecall Miracle Bottomless, which is still really good against what we have. And because they have Bottomless in hand, I think either they drew Bottomless for turn, or their set is another Bottomless. But if it was another Bottomless, they would have used it on the Warrior Lady. So, in my mind, I'm like, okay, he drew Bottomless for turn, and his set isn't Bottomless. He grabs Stratos, he grabs Alias, and then he passes the turn. Now, if he had set Bottomless here, well, after attacking, of course. If he had if he had set Bottomless here, this game would have been a fair bit tougher, I think, because I would summon White Knight, he would Bottomless it, and then we'd be kind of screwed. I would basically be forced to go Future Fusion, send double Red Med, get one of them Bottomless, maybe book it, I don't really know. But then we'd be in a bad spot against the Miracle Fusion if that ever gets alive. One thing that he could have also done a little bit differently here, too, as well, is... Um, Oh, the Miracle Fusion's already live. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is this is good. I thought he didn't have Waters and Grave. I forgot about the Diva play. But yes, so if I go for a Future Fusion now, uh, we get owned by Mi Miracle Fusion, basically. So I can't really go for that. Had he set the Bottomless. 
But since he didn't set the bottomless, I can just bring out White Knight and like kind of instigate a stalemate where I attack over Stratos. He can't get over a resolved White, White Knight very easily without crashing Absolute Zero. So I was thinking, okay, if he goes Absolute Zero plus Elemental Hero Neos Alias here, um, this is actually really bad for us because <laughs> he can crash the Zero if he wants to and then um, attack directly for 1900, set bottomless. And then on our next turn, we're just like in an awkward spot where we have like, do we summon the Exploder Dragon? risk losing to a lot of different stuff i don't know it's just a tough situation to be in for sure so like he miracles he makes the absolute zero in defense and then he sets sets the bottomless now and passes so i think had he set the bottomless on the previous turn and then like um had he like gotten a little bit more aggressive here i think it would have favored him a little bit more because getting the alias in play means that hero blasts are going to be live if you're going to set the bottomless now it means you probably should have just set it last turn because this is the same position that we had last turn where if my set card is heavy storm it's going to hit you either way and then um Summoning this guy in defense is, I don't know, it's it's the same as summoning an attack, because if I crash into it, it's the same, basically. We pick up Torrential, which is amazing. It means we can, like, further initiate our stalemate. I can actually set Torrential this turn, and then next turn, um, if I go for Future Fusion, and then, like, Wyvern bring out a Red Med, for example. Like, let's say I go attack over zero, right? Future Fusion, Wyvern bring out a Red Med. He goes bottomless, I can chain Torrential, and then I can Wyvern bring out that Red Med again. So there's like, there's some play there that I can do um, using the torrential to play around the bottomless to get my guy in the graveyard. He picks up a second bottomless, which is really good for him here. But um, again, it's just a stalemate. I can also just wait till he summons another monster to go for the torrential. I'm not really in a rush here. We find gold sarcophagus, which is really nice. I can gold sarc for heavy storm. And then in two turns, I'm basically just going to resolve my future fusion and hopefully just win on the back of that. He picks up another alias. Again, I think this whole time, like, even even just swinging the zero into White Knight is pretty favorable. Like, you want to get the aliases going. You want to get the pressure going. Like, you want to force me to do something before I have access to my Heavy Storm, more or less. He summons alias. He attacks. I elect not to Torrential here because I'm like, okay, I can get over the alias with any of my other monsters. And also, if I Torrential here, um, then Spark actually kind of owns me, basically, because I don't have Book to protect myself from Bottomless. So he attacks for 1900. Um, I also don't have Torrential to protect myself from Bottomless. Here, we don't get Heavy Storm quite yet. We find Rhoda. We grab Deity Warrior Lady. I thought for a good bit here about what I want to set. I could have set Exploder Dragon to, like, play a little bit better around, like, Gemini Spark. But I could also set Deity Warrior Lady to just, like, try to get the Alias Banish to cut him off of stuff. I don't know if he's going to attack into my set monster because I know that I Rhoda for Deity Warrior Lady. I could also summon the Warrior Lady to try and bait Bottomless. But then it leaves my life total like pretty exposed so i didn't really know what to do i ended up setting the warrior lady there's a lot of different lines there though i mean we're just testing so it's like good to just pick one and, and move forward see what happens i said it he does end up attacking into it it does trade the two cards and then he summons alias here i torrential because i'm like okay next time i'm getting heavy storm so i'm gonna get value out of my torrential now basically and he didn't he didn't have the read that i had torrential because um i didn't torrential when he summoned alias with zero so yeah pretty much that we pick up Starlight Road, which is nice. I go ahead and grab Heavy Storm off the off the thing. I Heavy Storm, he chains Hero Blast to add back his guy, but then he loses both his bottom lists. We're able to activate Future Fusion, reveal the lad, send five. We do send double Red Med with this configuration because our White Knight is gone and two of our Red Meds are going to be gone. So having Totem in the grave is not very useful. And also versus this deck, having Drago is not very useful because they don't special summon a ton of Light and Darks. Bryo Goyo Zero, which is the normal OTK setup, is all non-dark, so... There's no real reason for me to do that. And then also, also, I need to play around brain control and uh, I think it's just brain control. So the best way to play around brain control is to go double wyvern, bring out double red med in defense position. And that way I don't lose to brain control plus alias on the next turn because my life total is so low. So yeah, he goes gold sarcophagus for miracle, sets alias, sets hero blast. But then on our turn, we are pretty much able to win through almost anything because we have the road. We bring out white knight, we bring out mass, we attack with everything. Now, he does have the Hero Blast to deal with the Mask to survive this turn. And if he does find Miracle next turn, it's actually really bad for us. Like, we lose everything. Like, to be fair, um, he he's forced to summon the Zero in defense position, and he has to kind of chill. And we get a five-headed next turn, and we have to kind of chill. So it's kind of like an interesting situation where, like, I, again, it's a stalemate situation. And then eventually we'll find a way to maybe, I don't even know. I don't even know what the game plan is if he finds Miracle. Let's say he finds Miracle next turn, right? He summons Absolute Zero in defense position. He stabilizes. Uh, we get Five-Headed Dragon. 
I don't know what our game plan is. I think we have brain control still in the deck and gold sarch, so that's two ways to play through a defense position absolute zero. We could also additionally just attack and then uh, let all our guys die, which sucks, of course. <laughs> can't Starlight Road in that instance because Absolute Zero would be destroyed during the damage step. You can't Starlight Road during the damage step. So we wouldn't be able to Starlight Road the Absolute Zero effect. Um, but in the end phase, we'd have one more Wyvern to be able to bring back Red Med and rebuild on the next turn. And we'd also have Deep Prison plus Starlight Road to protect ourselves. So that's probably the game plan. Like, just put him off as many cards as possible. Uh, he draws Plague and he doesn't. He isn't able to stabilize, and that's game one. So yeah, even even through everything, like um, there were a lot of moments where if he just had like one specific card, like we definitely lost. So it's good to keep that in mind. Like this is a this is a tournament deck. Like this is a deck that I've like played and tested with a ton, and he's playing kind of like a brew or whatever. But it's actually like kind of going head to head, which is like something something you got to keep in mind when you're actually like playing um, playing a new deck for sure. Is like how can this go head to head with with like tournament uh with tournament decks basically anyway he sets two he dust shoots us here he tries to grab mast but we talk about it i'm like you should probably take red eyes because if you take if you take mast like you're giving me the opportunity to basically set up um to basically set up solemn plus red eyes which if which is just really good like that's just a really good uh setup it's really hard to deal with that um although there is argument for taking mast because if you take the mast the red eyes doesn't really do as much like at most i'm bringing back a totem dragon if i'm lucky but solemn plus red eyes is so good that you should probably always take red eyes here and if i draw any other monsters like the red eyes goes kind of crazy into an otk because i have brain so it's like eh, you probably should take red eyes here so we talk about it a bit i'm like yeah you should probably take red eyes so yeah, he takes red eyes we set the totem we set the torrential and solemn and we pass here he goes ecall he grabs stratos and I'm like, fucked. Like, <laughs> this is really, really tough to, to deal with. He summons Stratos. We chain Torrential because we basically have to. Like, he can just attack over the totem and then, like, infinitely pressure us. Uh, and then we're going to be forced to set Mast. And then our, to our Torrential is going to get worse and worse and worse as the game goes on. So, um, I, think, I think it's best to do it here. Plus, like, if he has, like, let's say a Tuner set, like Plague specifically, um, it's, it's pretty bad for us. It could be Sangin, which would be awful, obviously, but... Um, yeah, if he just is able to synchro into like Goyo, steal our totem, it could, it could get really bad. Um, maybe we should just wait for the synchro, but if he just attacks with Stratos, next turn I'm forced to set Masked into my own Torrential, so I think that's like, it's an awkward spot to use Torrential, but we kind of have to do it. And now we're down three cards to five, which is never where you want to be. We draw Space Typhoon. I summon Mass Dragon. Uh, this resolves, so he doesn't have Torrential. If it was Torrential, I would have probably just let it resolve. But I don't really want Deep Prison to happen because I do want to make sure my Mass Dragon hits the Grave. Because if I top deck Red Med, that means I can bring out Totem Dragon and then bring back Mass Dragon. So Red Med will be at least a plus one off the top. So I Space Typhoon the back row in case it's Deep Prison, which it is. We attack directly for 1400. And then I pass the turn. Here he summons Diva, And this is like a tournament play. This is a play that like, um, maybe not a lot of people would make. But this is definitely something that I get it twisted with. I don't solemn here <laughs> because, okay, so like I have a lot of experience with this deck. I know from experience, like if you look at this deck, right, if you look at the configuration, what in my deck outs a Cataster? I have triple DD Warrior Lady. I have Rhoda. So that's already four outs. I have triple D Prison. So that's seven outs. And then I have triple Red Med. So that's 10 outs. So I have 10 ways to out a resolved Cataster. Yeah, I'm going to lose my Mass Dragon. But if I draw specifically Red Med, I get it back immediately. And it's better to save the Solemn, because if I draw specifically Red Med, instead of going from, like, um, losing, or, like, randomly, like, just down a billion cards with a Mass Dragon in play, which he can out with a bunch of different cards, you know? Um, I go from, I go from, like, that to an immediately winning position where I have Red Med plus Mass plus Solemn, which is really good. So, I'm saying I have 10 outs, I'll keep my Solemn for for something a little bit more important. I don't really want to drop to 4,000 right now anyway when he still has four cards in hand. So I'm just going to let this happen, basically. I kind of just trust my deck will top deck something. I have like a, a little under a one in three chance to top deck something really good. Mirror Force also outs it. So it, it's it's roughly one in three. I think it's a little bit under. Future Fusion also kind of counts uh, if we draw that. So maybe it's a little more than one in three. We have a, we have a really good chance to, to hit over the next few turns. And I don't mind taking like 2,200 or even 4,000, 4,100 off an alias because... That just means my Solemn costs less, basically. We top deck Red Med. 
So the deck does deliver. We bring back Totem. We banish it. We special Red Men. We bring out Re Mass Dragon. And now I'm in a much better spot. Uh, happy that I saved the Solemn as well, even though he knows about it. It's still there protecting the Red Med, and he's going to have to do something about it. So we attack here for 1400. Now, that being said, his hand's pretty good, and it looks like it can do something about it. So he's going to go Deep Sea Diva, bring out Diva, stack for Plague to get that monster out of his hand, Rota for Bubble Man, go ahead and set the E Call, special the Bubble Man. And this is not a bad turn. This is not a bad turn because it at least guaranteedly clears the red med. And so it's just leaving me with just a mass dragon. He goes ahead and synchros into Goyo. He E calls. Now one thing he could have done here was synchro into Bryonic. E call, maybe pitch something to bounce the Solemn Judgment. Or like so basically if he goes Bryonic first, I'm forced to Solemn it. And then he can E call for another bubble man and then make Colossal Fighter which is good for him. But if he goes, like, let's say he goes, um, I guess I'm maybe not forced to solemn it because he could have Hero Blast. I don't know. It's a tough situation because if he goes Bionic, like, he can he can do something to add a card to his hand and force my Solemn. And then he can Synchro into Colossal Fighter afterward. So if he goes Bionic first, it's more forcing. But he knows about my brain control and he knows about, like, uh, he just knows about the brain control, so it's like, does he want to go for Bionic into brain control type thing? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I think going for Bionic here might have changed the course of this game. It's hard to tell, right? It's hard to tell, because you got to know, you got to think that, like, am I going to Solemn the Bionic? If I do, then this is insane for you, because you can E-call another Bubble Man, and then you get to Colossal, which is really good. Uh, but if I don't do that, then I don't know. I don't know. It's a tough situation. It's a tough situation. Either way, like the deck is like showing showing some significant promise here with this sort of comeback play from a position that like is really tough to deal with. Like red eyes plus solemn plus brain control is like that's a legit tough position to play through. And uh even even with this like I'm not saying like questionable play, but like it's possible going Bionic first is, is more forcing. Cause you could e-call, and then if I don't solemn the e-call, then uh, Bryonic can pitch, bounce one of my cards, and then um, it can bounce the Solemn, and then you can Synchro into Colossal Fighter, and then uh, that would also turn on the Hero Blast, because you'd grab Alias. So I feel like that's better, um, going Bryonic first, in hindsight. Uh, yeah, I think it's just better. I'm, I'm not sure if there's something I'm missing here, but there might be something I'm missing here. It's kind of a lot to look at and like uh, sort of absorb. Yeah, I think, I think it is just better, because you, you go Bryonic, I don't Solemn the Bionic, or I'm forced to Solemn the Bionic. Um, either way, you get to Colossal under Solemn Judgment. Because if I if I do Solemn the Bionic, then you can E-Call for the second Bubble Man, Special It, go into Goyo, go into Colossal, and my Solemn's gone. And if you if I don't Special the... If I don't Solemn the Bionic, then you E-Call for Alias, you Pitch, Bounce the Solemn, you can Hero Blast the Mass Dragon, you can Synchro into Colossal afterwards, run over the Red Eyes, and then you're playing against literally just a Brain Control and a Red Eyes, or not brain control and a red eyes. You're just playing against just a brain control. And that's it. And uh, Solemn, I guess, that's in my hand. With a Colossal Fighter. Which is pretty good, I think. So I think that that's a little bit better here. But yeah, I mean, there's some play to the deck, basically. <laughs> is what I'm getting to. Is like The deck is a lot deeper than it looks. Uh, but yeah, this play ends up like, like this. Where we both end up in a top decking situation. Whereas instead, in the previous play, we'd have Solemn in hand with brain control in hand. And they'd have a Colossal Fighter in play. And we'd have nothing in play. Or if I Solemn the Bryonic, then he'd have Colossal, we'd have Mass Dragon. We wouldn't have Solemn in play, but we'd have Brain Control, so it looks similar to this. Mass Dragon could get us an out to Colossal and Exploder Dragon, but... No, there's no but. That's just it. I think that's just it. Yeah. We attack for 14. We set the Deep Prison. He picks up another Hero Blast. So that E-Call being forced to grab a second Bubble Man is worse for him, because now his Hero Blasts are dead. We pick up Bottomless. Attack for 14. And this is where the dragon deck shines because it's just like literally 18 removal spells. And that's it. Like, Mass Dragon's removal spell, D Prison, Bottomless removal spell, and Burn is a lethal push. So like, or not Burn, sorry, Brain. <laughs> my, my Freudian slips. Yeah, this card, when I see this card, I just think Burn damage. But yeah, Brain is a lethal push. So this is where the dragon deck shines. If it ever gets to like top decking situations like this, which is something that like happens a lot in tournaments and stuff, this is where it just like excels. You just have a shitload of removal spells and your opponent has a lot less live draws than you do. Uh, Future Fusion, gonna send some cards, but he's still down bad. We attack with Mast. 
It does turn on its Hero Blast, so he's able to pop the Mass Dragon, but we have removal for days to deal with these alias. So I'm just going to set another D-Prison and pass. He T-sets, telling me he basically doesn't have... um. He basically doesn't have... What's the card? Gemini Spark. Otherwise, he would have summoned the alias. We pick up Red Med, which is past the turn. He brings out Zero. We bottomless this guy. Destroys the Future Fusion. He flips alias. He attacks. We just take this 19 because I have Brain Control. And he knows we have Brain Control. So he Mind Crushes it, which is a smart play. Smart play. Uh, waiting to do that till now. Uh, and then we ha we pick up Warrior Lady. Again, we've drawn like four removal spells, but the deck is just all removal spells. Here he Typhoon. No, he doesn't do that yet. He attacks in the Warrior Lady. Warrior Lady banishes both. He's forced to e-call for Alias, and then he is going to T-set again. Again, telling us that he doesn't have the, the thing, the whatever it is. We summon Drago. We attack over the Alias, but Hero Blast is a powerful card, so he's able to come back, kind of. And Facey Typhoon is one of our back row. He picks up Gemini Spark. He's going to Hero Blast, pop that. Normal summon Alias, attack. We deprison. He sparks. Sacks his Alias, draws a card. It's bottomless. We pick up Wyvern. We summon it. It gets bottomless pain suffering he picks up brain control sets it passes a turn we pick up dust tornado set it pass the turn he picks up spark set it here we finally pick up mass dragon we are able to dust tornado the new set normal summon mass dragon banish it for red Man, and bring out what we need to bring out now the reason you dust tornado the new set there is because they are comfortable setting that card into heavy storm which means that their first card was more than likely a bluff their second one is more than likely the card they need to survive that's usually what it is that's why you set the you dust tornado the new set there but yeah, overall, a really close match. There were some insane moments in those turns where like, how do you just like sequence the synchro stuff a little bit differently? I think it would have altered the outcome of the match. Maybe I still would have won. Maybe I still would have lost. Who knows? The deck does play a lot of removal, a lot of ways to out a Colossal Fighter, but it definitely changed the, the course of the match. And I, I was definitely impressed with the deck after this. I think um, I think I'm going to try to get a game with it. I actually kind of want to play it. I think, it's, I think it's a cool deck. I'm going to try to get a game with it, show off what the deck does. Hopefully, I can pilot it to, oh my gosh, a win, of course. That'd be that'd be great. That'd be ideal. I mean, just showing off what the deck can do will be cool, too. All right, sick. Let's go ahead and uh, let's hop into a match. Get it twisted. How's your day going, guys? You guys like this type of video? I, I'm, not, I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure if you guys like this type of thing. This is kind of like a mishmash. We got like, we got like new deck plus replays plus live gameplay plus whatever. You know, post RBET, we gotta we gotta come with the fucking heat, you know. All right, good luck, have fun. This guy's got a morphing jar avatar. That is terrifying. At least we get to go first, though. At least we get to go first. So we're gonna be looking to set up that Bionic Goyo Absolute Zero OTK with this deck. That's gonna be the game plan. This opening hand is decent. I think we are gonna go with normal alias Set Hero Blast. Set Mirror Force. Hmm. Yeah, I'll set Mirror Force. I'll set Mirror Force too. There's a chance. There's a chance that we want both of these set. Yes, of course, Heavy Storm owns us, but Heavy Storm's gonna own this deck at any point in the game. So that's just what I've come to learn from Hero Ble Hero Beat. As long as you don't have the protection, Heavy Storm just owns you no matter what. Just a set monster, beautiful. Call of the Haunted is very nice. Okay, so now I think we're gonna go for we're gonna go for something. I think we're gonna go for Bryonic. I think we're gonna go Deep Sea Diva. Activate. Special summon out. Spined Gilman, most likely. Right? That's the move. Opponent's just on set one monster pass. Yeah, it's 100 percent Spined Gilman. Because Spine Gilman's gonna pump up our Bryonic and make him an actual threat. Okay. So, now we synchro with Deep Sea Diva and Alias into Bryonic. What I want to do is I actually want to Hero Blast. No, it makes no difference. It makes no difference. I think we just Pitch Hero Blast. Activate, Pitch Hero Blast, bounce their monster. Attack for 17, and then attack for 27. What is he selecting this for? Is he reading it? I'm not really sure. Take 17, and then uh, Bronic is 2700 because of Gilman. 
yeah. So yeah, uh, we deal a little bit extra damage. I'm gonna set Call of the Haunted too. I'm saying fuck it. He didn't have Heavy Storm last turn. I don't think he has it this turn. So, I don't know. Get it twisted. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens. This is a lot of pressure. Let's see if he can hang. His deck had no back row last turn, so maybe he just doesn't have back row. We have Call of the Haunted. Okay, Brain Control. That's legit. He has to pay 8 for that, though. What's he going to target? He's going to target Brionic. Do we want to stop this? We don't really have a stop for this, so... We'll just let that happen. I think that's fine. Honestly, if he's going to attack... I'm pretty tempted to Mirror Force this. Because I like having the Gilman in play. And it also puts Brionic in the Grave for Call. I think Mirror Forcing this is better. Because it goes to the Graveyard and then we have Call of the Haunted on Brionic for game. So I think that that's going to be... That's going to be our game plan here. Let's see if he sets another monster and then just passes like he did last turn. Looks like that's going to be the case. Space Typhoon, perfect discard for our Bionic. We'll call target Bionic. And then, um, yeah, that should just be the game. Our opponent got to play one card. Pretty solid. <laughs> Pretty solid stuff. I like it. I like it. What deck plays Brain Control? Hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I don't know how to side. I don't know how to side. Our opponent's going to be able to side versus us, and there's not really much we can do about that, unfortunately. But I'm just going to run it back. I think the deck is legit. I think it can play through just about anything, even in post-board situations. So we'll find out a little bit more information this game. If we lose, we'll be able to sideboard accordingly. And if not, then the deck's busted. And this hand looks insane. <laughs> like, this hand's really good. Spark, obviously not ideal without Alias, but... We can summon D.Va, set our hand, special bubble man, mind control their shit, go from there, like, I'm feeling it, oh my gosh, okay, now this hand's really good, because we, we got interruption, so it's just a matter of, like, if we wanna, if we wanna grab Gilman or D.Va, I think we end up grabbing D.Va, so, let's just mind control what they got first, because I wanna see what they got first, let's see what they got, it's a Raikou, so that means we can make Starbucks plus Gilman, which I kind of like. Do I have two Stardusts? I don't. That's annoying. Uh, we can make Thought Ruler plus Gilman. Or we can make Colossal plus Gilman. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Uh, I think. Okay, I think we play around Gores by going Diva into Gilman, special Bubble Man and attack. And then, yeah, that plays around Gores because then we can Ryko Pop his Gores. So we'll go Diva activate. Special summon out Gilman. Set three. Special summon Bubble Man in attack position. Go battle phase. Yeah, this plays around Gore is the best. So we go 600 from Diva. Um, and then 800 from Bubble Man. And then 1700 from Gilman. That's 3100. And then main phase two, we can we can figure out how we want to synchro this away. I think it's just make... Well, the deck plays Raikou, so... Hmm. What deck plays Raikou and doesn't set back row? Vayu Turbo, maybe? Light Sworn, potentially? Hmm. I don't know. Um... We're just going to mill three. And then I will synchro. Because if we make Stardust, then Heavy Storm is dead anyway. But we have Starlight Road for Heavy Storm. So I feel like we should make Colossal in case... Like, if it's Light Sworn and they have Honest, that's annoying. So I'm going to make Colossal. And then pass the turn. And that way our Starlight Road is still alive. It's possible I should have two Stardusts in this extra deck. I think his original extra deck had two Stardusts. It's possible we should have two. But... Um, I think this is fine. And then this also plays into, like, Mirror Force and shit, because we have Road. Yeah, this looks like potentially card destruction. Shit. All right. Discards Dandelion, Titanial, and Phoenixian Cluster Amaryllis. Ooh. That's interesting. Now we've got ourselves a game. Now we've got ourselves a game. 
He gets to draw three new cards, he gets two new tokens, and he can bring out the Amaryllis in the M phase. Oh, this is actually pretty bad. This is actually pretty bad for us. Hmm. Yeah, he gets set up here. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Draw your three. Opponent really thinking here. I don't know what he's thinking about. Either that or he probably had to go AFK for a reason. I don't know if my last turn was the best possible. I feel like we could have dealt more damage. And we could have ended with two synchros. Like, I could have grabbed D.Va and then ended with, like, Arm Bryonic. But, like, all I saw last game was Brain Control. And I really didn't want to get Brain Controlled again. And I'm kind of glad I didn't go for Bryonic again because this deck does look like it plays Mark of the Rose. Like, I'm pretty sure this deck plays Mark of the Rose. So, um, yeah. It's better for me that I didn't go for it. Dandy tokens are going to be fucking annoying. I'm not going to lie. They're going to be really annoying to get through. Just because, like, we don't have the dudes. Another Diva would be a great top deck. Stratos would be a great top deck. There's a lot of really good top decks here. She's going to set a monster and phase bring out the Amaryllis. Jeez. Okay. That's really annoying. Um. So... What I want to do is I want to clear the tokens. Okay, now that we have Alias, that's actually really good because we have Spark. We could Spark the set monster too. I mean, we could clear everything here if we want to. I don't know if we want to attack the cluster though. I think we just summon Alias. And then we try to clear the board. Let's go battle phase. Gilman attack the token. Alias attack the token. What are the two set cards that he could have been sleeping on? Now the set monster is potentially Dandelion. It's potentially Raikou. I think it's more likely to be Raikou. Um, so I do want to spark it. I think I am. I think I am going to spark it. If it's not Raikou, I'm an idiot. Hamster. Beautiful. That's a really good hit for us. That's a really, really good hit. And we drew Call of the Haunted. So I'm going to set that and pass the turn. Call can bring back maybe a tuner. Oh, they're going to hit it end phase. Damn. I was not ready for Typhoon. I was ready for Heavy Storm with the Starlight Road, but I was not ready for Typhoon. Now, if he wants to swing with the Amaryllis, he can. We have D-Prison for it. Yeah, and that's going to remove this, which is an annoying threat from play. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, is I'm going to deprison this. Because, like, that card's just, like, representing annoying blocker, annoying damage every turn. Like, it's going to complicate us winning this game, I feel like. Since we're down cards, just giving him time and giving him blockers is not what we want. Another deprison's not a bad draw. I'm going to send it with Colossal first. If it's Raikou, then um, that's good. And if it's Volcanic Counter, then that's good. He's going to hit not the back row. Very interesting. Mills 3. Lone Fire the mill, Sang in the mill, Dust Shoot the mill. Okay. So he has Dust Shoot still in his deck game too. Interesting. I wonder if he'll side that out. So we get our 1700 in, which is good. We get a set D prison, which is also good, and we can pass. He's got a lot more back row. I might want to bring in Heavy Storm. I'm not really sure. He did set a Hidden Armory. Okay, interesting. That makes sense. He's going to grab probably DDR here, I'm assuming. If he pitches a Dandelion, we're fucked. Because, like... Then he gets back Titanial with two tokens, and, like, a lot of our shit is, like, targeting removal. So, Titanial plus two tokens is going to be pretty difficult for us to ever beat, especially now that Gilman is gone. Now, Mark of the Rose is, like, that's a little bit better for us. I'm not going to lie. That is a little bit better for us than, than DDR here. DDR would be a lot worse for us. So, Mark of the Rose can take Gilman, but he can't actually normal summon this turn. So I think it's going to be pretty difficult for him to convert off the Gilman. Uh, I don't think he can he can, uh, he can, can do anything with this. I think he's going to be forced to give it back to us this turn. Yeah. Yeah, Hidden Armory stops you from being able to Normal Summon. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? I wasn't even game. That was still a game. That was still a game. That was still a game. He was still in it. Like, we just get Gilman back? Okay, let's see what we would have drawn. Let's see what we would have drawn. We would have drawn... Oh, okay. 
Well, in that case, maybe it wasn't a game. <laughs> well, in that case, it says not only play. You were still alive, but but I feel it. I feel it. GG's. GG's. I think I think we showcased the strength of this deck. I think we showcased the strength of the Bubble Man as an extender for synchro plays. I think we showcased the strength of like just being able to put up a lot of OTKs. I think this deck is actually really legit. I think it's, it's kind of slept on, or Bubble Man in general is like kind of slept on. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next vid. Peace.